Hi, my name is Ryan Navarro and I'm an Applications Engineer at Hawkridge Systems. In this video I want to show you how to program 3-axis milling with Camworks. Now we're going to start off with a simple example of a part that was created in SOLIDWORKS here. And it's just a, it has a cavity that's sloped down and we have some you know different kind of fillets on the bottom here. So that's what's going to make this particular part a 3-axis part. Whereas we also have some 2.5-axis features like these holes and slots that we would expect our automatic feature recognition to pick up. Um, our automatic feature recognition won't do a good job automatically programming 3-axis features for us, so we'll take a look at how to do that manually. Now, if you're familiar with our 2.5-axis, you're familiar with that we'll create a new mill part setup. So I'll choose the direction that I want to machine down, and then define some type of feature. So in 2.5-axis features, we have all different kinds, pockets, slots, holes, um, but with 3-axis, we're only going to be using one type of feature, a multi-surface feature. Okay, And when I choose that, it puts me into this prompt where I'm able to select various faces of my model if I want. So this is how it's done in a lot of other CAM software, is to go around and select the faces that you want to machine. Um, that used to be the workflow in CAMWorks, but now we have what we think is a, is a better method, which is to simply set this option to choose all displayed faces. So. If we choose all displayed faces, then Camworks is going to look at this entire part to machine um, with whatever three axis strategies we define. And it's very intelligent about it. So it's going to compare the part against the stock and figure out areas where it needs to remove material so it won't be cutting air. And it's also going to constantly be checking the size of the tool to make sure we're not gouging anywhere. Um, so what we'll see when applying three axis strategies is, is just like in two and a half axis, if we use a tool that's too big, will simply have areas of material left over to, to machine in a second operation. Um, now I, I, I get to choose the type of strategy I want to apply. And just like in two and a half axis, we have a roughing and a finishing strategy for our pockets. Here in three axis, we are always going to be using a combination of a rougher and a finisher. And our roughing operation is called area clearance. And we have different types of finishing operations. So you'll see pattern project, constant step over, Z level, and we'll take a look at what each of those means. Um, to get started, I'm going to choose the area clearance constant step over and click OK. So now I have a multi-surface feature placed in and I can go ahead and generate my operation plan which will add the associated operations there which is the area clearance and the constant step over. Now if I were to generate toolpath right now we'd be trying to apply these three axis strategies to the entire part which isn't necessarily what we want so I want to contain it just to the area where I want to be performing my three axis, which is this interior cavity here. And I can do that easily by creating a contain area. So if I just right click on one of my operations, I can create a contain area. And I could use solder sketches for this. Or I can select edges or faces, or in this case an edge loop, to create a contain area. And you can see there the yellow preview of that area. I can offset it if I want to. And I can also control if I want the tool to go up to that curve or on center to the curve or past it. So I'll choose on center in this case. And now if I expand out my operations, you can see that contain area was added to my area clearance, my rougher, and I can just hold control to drag that down to my constant step over as well. So now if I generate my toolpath, it'll be generating only in the areas where we want it. Now constant step over is a great toolpath for getting a really good surface finish and really needing to spend minimal amount of time programming. And we'll see that in just a second. Um, first, let's take a look at our area clearance, which is our rougher, again, for three axis. So we'll see it's roughing at, at different levels there. And if I double click it to look at my operations, I see a lot of what I would expect from a, a roughing um, operation. I have the ability to control my cut pattern. So we can do a pocket out or pocket in pattern. Uh, as well as things like our high speed roughing, which is our volume mill module. I can control my step overs, my depth amounts. So right now I'm taking quarter inch cuts. I might want to decrease that to maybe 0.1 inch. Then I could click preview and see my resulting rough toolpath, just to make sure I'm not asking too much of my finisher. Okay, And of course we can control lead in, lead outs, things like that. Now, as far as the constant step over, we can see the toolpath that's creating. It's creating a pretty dense toolpath right now because I'm using a relatively small step over, but it's actually conforming to the shape of our cavity. And that's one of the things that's going to make constant step over really good to just 
you know, throw on one type of finisher operation and, and let that do it for you. If we were to simulate this through, um, for our three axis simulations, a lot of time I like to use turbo mode here, which will just kind of rush me to the end result. Um, we'll see that we get a very, very smooth surface finish. Uh, and if you want to get a better preview there, you can go ahead and turn up your, your turbo mode quality. Okay, and rerun that simulation. So we can see just how smooth the resulting um, surface will be for us. Okay, but the constant step over won't necessarily be the most time efficient um, tool path. So if I'm going to be doing a big production run of these parts, I might want to spend a little more time um, trying to optimize that three axis cycle. And we have many more tools to choose from. So if I want to try a different finishing strategy, I can simply right click and add a new three axis operation. And here we'll see our area clearance rougher as well as our different types of finishers. So Z level, pattern project, constant step over, and we'll take a look at what some of those mean in just a minute. But here I'll choose pattern project. Okay, and I simply want to link it to that feature that I created earlier, my multi-surface feature, and click OK. Now my default pattern type for a pattern project is going to be this slice, and that's actually going to be really useful for this part because basically what we'll do, if we were to look at it from above here, we're just going to want to slice back and forth for the most part. So we're going to basically zigzag back and forth down this part, and that will do a, a good job of getting us a good surface finish, um, but still being very time efficient. Okay, so I'll click OK, but before I actually generate that toolpath, I just want to again add that contain area down there. So I'll drag that down to my new operation, and let's generate that and see what that looks like. This is a different type of finishing strategy, and here we'll see the, the three axis pattern project. It does a really good job conforming to most of our geometry here, except for those steep walls that we have on the side. So because we're basically projecting um, a, from a 2D projection from the top, it's not following those sidewalls very well. But we have the ability to fix that if we want to. I can go into my pattern project options, okay, and we have options for cross machining. So if I want to now, I can add in some cross passes just in those steep areas there. So if I turn on cross machining, I'll turn on my option to stay down to reduce my retracts, and we'll regenerate that toolpath. And now we see that we've added some, some extra crisscrossing there, only in the steep areas where we need it. And in the rest of the cavity here, we can get by just by going back and forth with our pattern project slice pattern. Okay. So really, the three-axis module is great because it, it, you don't have to go and select those manual faces and specify. You can basically have Chemrex look at entire regions of your model and ensure that you're not you're not wasting time cutting air and you're not going to have um, any issues with gouging because it's automatically you know, conscious of the tool size. And you have many different finishing options to choose from and we can mix and match them to, to kind of optimize your program. So let's take a look at a couple different finishing options here. Um, here's a, a part that has some kind of interesting circular feature here. And here I start off applying a Z level. Okay. And the Z-level pattern, it's hard to tell from this view, but if we look at it from a head-on view here, we'll see that it goes down at constant Z-levels. Okay, So that's not necessarily the best for this particular part where it could completely miss some of my features, like this little um, hill here. So you know, we can get around that by going into our Z-level and using smaller and smaller cut amounts, but there's also options to use a variable Z-level that will basically intelligently look at this and place in extra Z-level cuts in the different locations. So now if we were to look at it again from that head-on view, we'll see it added additional passes where it saw the slope changing. Okay, So that's a different type of finisher. We have the Z-level. And I also want to show a couple different options for the pattern project. Earlier we looked at just the slice, but for circular types of geometry we also have radial and spiral patterns. So here you can see a radial pattern for the pattern project where it's emanating out from a, a point that I specified that can be a sketch point or a vertex and then it's radiating out in each direction Okay, and we could also switch that to a spiral if we wanted to see a spiral pattern emanating out from that vertex and as kind of a um, special case we have an additional type of pattern project called a flow line which you can see using here and that allows me to input two curves so I input this lower curve here and the upper curve here and it will actually blend between them 
very smoothly. So this is a good one to use if you ever are going after a certain look or a certain surface finish where you really want the tool path to blend like that. So we've got a variety of different finishing uh, mechanisms or operations that we can specify. You know, the constant step over is really kind of the jack of all trades. It does a really good job for your internal cavities or external features of um, getting a, a good surface finish. But you have these special um, specialized finishing operations that you can mix and match in different situations as you see fit. So thank you for watching this video and I hope it was helpful. And uh, stay tuned for more detailed videos on additional um, tips for 3-axis machining.